Hi, Diana here. Today, we're going to answer a question of, of one of my subscribers. They asked me if you could do more than just make an animal talk. I need to quantify this. It, not just an animal, but a person, a photograph, anything that you're going to make talk. Can you do more than just make it talk? Yes is the answer. And today I'm going to show you how. It does take time. It's not a simple process, but you can do it if you want to. Now, I picked this picture of a deer that I took, a little buck. I actually put these as a design, the bulbs, so I didn't have to cut them out separately. I'm just going to take the eyeball and turn it off in Photoshop because they're already done and separated and very nice and ready to go into Illustrator. Now we have the buck and we're going to separate all of the pieces of the buck so that they would be movable. First thing we have is the body. Now I'm going to turn everything off and then show you each piece. Whatever you choose, you're going to copy it. To do that, you hit the little button up here, here and say duplicate the layer. Now when you duplicate the layer, you're going to name that layer body, B-O-D-Y, with a colon. And then you're going to prepare that piece separate from the rest. Now, I made a mistake here, and I'm going to correct it. When you're doing this, I usually use a feather because it makes it really nice and smooth. But the problem is, when you do that with the feather and bring it into Photoshop, we're going to have to convert this to a vector. When you convert a feather to a vector, it leaves a white line around the artwork that you have to clean off. Now, this is going to be body and put a colon after everything that you're naming. And the reason I'm doing that is because it saves you time once you bring it into Illustrator to convert it into what you're going to have to use when you go to Cartoon Animator 5. Our next thing is going to be the neck. Now, I took the neck. You can see when you put the head on it, I rounded it off. And the reason that you round it like this is so that when you link it to bring it into Cartoon Animator, you want it to move, but you don't want it to look clunky. So you want it to move with a smooth. If you don't round off every piece that you're creating, then when you link it, it's going to have a cut mark when you bring it into Cartoon Animator. So you have to round it off and smooth it out. So now we'll have our neck with the colon. Next, we're going to do our left horn. The bottom part, you just copy, use your cloning stamp and make a round. And that's left horn, colon. Then you have your left ear. Bring it out. Make it round. Bring your right horn with a colon. Your ear with a colon. Your head. And then when you finish, you have each part is a separate part. And each part has been rounded. And each part has been named with a colon after it. Now we're going to save the file. And I'll be back in just a minute. We're going to import it into Illustrator and finish preparing the animation for Cartoon Animator 5. Now I have imported the Photoshop file into Illustrator. I have completed most of the work, so I'm not going to repeat everything. I'm just going to show you what you need to do. First thing, when you bring the Photoshop file into Illustrator, you're going to get all of these files exactly like you did it in Photoshop. Once it opens like that, you're going to create two more layers, and those layers are going to be named RL Bone with a colon and RL Image with a colon. You're going to highlight everything that you brought in from Photoshop, and you're going to drag it into the RL Image folder. So now you'll have RL Image. When you close it up, you can't see anything. When you open it up, you see all the images that we just brought in. Now, each one of these images is going to have to be turned into a vector. This is a painstaking process, but it has to be done to be able to create an SVG that is readable by Cartoon Animator 5. Now, the way that you do this, I'm going to turn everything off except for the one bulb here. And you highlight the bulb. You go to Image Trace. 
which it doesn't show now because I've already done it, but your image trace would show up right here. You want to select the high quality one and you click trace. It will trace it. Then you're going to object expand. It will expand it. Then you're going to object ungroup twice. The reason for that is, is it won't ungroup the white. And when you finish, you're going to click on all the white areas and delete them. Then you'll have this, the image left. And now that's been turned from a raster into a vector. Then you say object group. Now you need to go through and do each one, one at a time. Just turn everything else off and turn on the one and you just select it. Run the image trace, object, expand, object ungroup, object ungroup, and then delete the white part that's around the outside and the image will be ready. And do that with each one of your images. And once you've finished, you'll have, you can see each one is no longer rasterized. It's no longer a single image. It's a vector image. You do have to group them to keep all the pieces together. Now, once you have your vector finished and you've gone around and, and you've completed vectorizing everything that you want in your image, doesn't matter what your image is, you're ready to connect the bones. You need to create the bones now so that it will be completely done when you go into Cartoon Animator and you will be ready to start animating. You open up RL Bone and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create your object pivot and your root pivot. It's the little X in the circle that I've shown in a couple of lessons. The circle is real easy to make. You just create a circle and fill it with whatever color you want. I did red. And then you make your little object pivot. It has to be one solid piece. So you'll have to create the two pieces and then use your pathfinder to join them into one piece. Now, once you've done that, then we're ready to start putting our dots in place. And you're going to put a dot in every single place that you want to link. Now the logic in linking is that you're going to have a circle and then it's going to link from the body to the neck. So neck, colon, colon, body, and then you're going to have a circle. Now the way you make your circles is you just, you create your circle. You have your neck circle here. Then you're going to control alt and just drag to the next place. And you want the next circle to be at the neck. Then you control drag from the neck. You want to drag to the bottom of the head. The next one is going to be your head and then you want your head dub. This is all in the prior lesson on how to set this up in part 10 and 11. You're going to want to connect the head, head nub, then you've got the head and then it'll go to the ear and the ear nub. Then it'll go from the head to the left ear and left ear nub. Then from the head to the horn and the horn nub. Then the head to the horn and the horn nub, right and left. Then we're going to have to attach the balls. And to do that, you would go from the right horn nub to the right upper ball and then the right upper ball nub. Same thing from the right upper to the right lower bulb and then the right lower bulb nub. So you're going to put all these dots. Make sure you have a dot that links everything that you want to be movable. So the head to the ear, head to head, let you move the head, head to your horn, head to your horn. This makes it all movable when you bring it into Cartoon Animator. Now to name it, you can just look at mine and see that each, each link, if you have a trouble with it, it's going to be the neck linking to the head with two, two colons in between and a colon at the end. Then the head is going to link to the head nub. So it'd be head, two colons, head nub, colon. Head will connect to the ear, right ear. So it's head, two colons, right ear, colon. Then the right ear connects to the right ear nub. So you have right ear, two colons, right ear nub, colon. So everything that links is going to have two colons in the middle and a colon at the end, no matter what you're doing. And that will be the linking system that 
cartoon animator understands and will bring it in. Now we have it all ready to go. And once you have all yours numbered, you're ready to go too. So we're going to bring it in. We're going to say File, Save. We have everything linked the way we want it. To bring it into Cartoon Animator, we have to save it as an SVG file. So File, Save As, SVG, Save. I already have it. It'll be SVG1, Convert to Outline, Embed, Presentation Attributes. You can use decimal places two or three. It's up to you, whichever you want. And then everything else, just leave it alone and say OK. And it will make our SVG file. Now I'll be back in just a minute with Cartoon Animator 5 and we'll import our new SVG and see if we can work with it. We have Cartoon Animator 5 open and we're going to create a character. And when we create a character, it gives us this little window that says Human S SVG Human Template or Open a File. I just click on Open a File and our project buck and it takes a second. And we are in composer mode and look at this. It brought it all in. It's ready to animate. Here's all your bones. They're all linked. Let's see if they work. Can we move the ear? Yep. Move the ear. Move the bone. Move each one of the ball. Move his head. You could just start right here and move the whole head. Or we can move it from the neck. Now we're going to go back to the stage mode. I want to make it a little bigger so it fits. You can see what I'm doing easier. Remember the blue line is the area that's going to be filmed. Okay, now the next step that we've got to do, gotta select it, convert this head into a morph based head. Now when we say that, you get your little window. The window is where we go to make it talk. And all of this is a process that you need to do. It takes a little time, but it's a process that if you do it right, everything's going to look great. If you don't do it right, then everything's going to look sloppy. So it's worth taking the time to get this right. Now I've already shown how to do this in quite a few other lessons. So if you don't want to watch this, you can just move forward quickly. Now our head appears and it is ready. So let's go back and let's see how the mouth and eyes work. We're going to open up the timeline. We have our butt project and let's look at the face. And I'm going to import a little clip. Just click on this and I've already made it. You can do it in WAVE or MP3. So I have a little MP3 file. Okay. Let's see how great this is going to work. And it stopped right there at uh, 125. So we'll go into our document settings and make it 125. That way we don't have to worry about how big our file is. Now we go back to the beginning, see what okay. it did. Okay, let's see how great this is going to work. So the voice works good. The mouth works good. Let's um, add a little... Let's, let's make the eyes, I, I want the eyes to blink. So we're going to hit the space bar and I'm going to click the eyes to make them link. Now we can move it up a little over and let's record. Okay, space. let's see how great this is going to work. So we've got a little bit of the face here. Let's see if we can need to add anything else. Okay, let's see how great this is going to work. Let's bring up the 2D key editor and it has all of your little ears and everything. I've already made some little movements. It's a quickie, but at least it's going to show you that everything works. So we're going to click okay. the button. Okay, let's see how great this is going to work. So the ears the bulbs, the antlers, the neck, the face, it all works. I believe it would take time to get it looking really smooth and okay. you know just the way you Let's want it. But great this is going to work. 
I think it's working pretty good. Okay, let's bring in, we're at the beginning, let's bring in our little prop. Static image, size it fit, see what we got. Okay, let's see how great this is gonna work. Everything works. So you can take your image and create a face that talks and ears that move and horns that move or whatever you have a desire to do, you can do it. Hope this helped you a little bit. Have a great day, Diana.